Hi everyone, welcome back to Sparkle on Substack with me, Claire Venus. I am an engagement consultant and mentor and I'm so delighted to have my pal Kate here today. So Kate and I connected, oh wow, earlier on this year, I was going to say a year ago, but no, it was actually earlier on this year in February time. And um, I'm part of Kate's membership on Substack and I've had this gorgeous experience sort of spending time there with the space that she's curated for other members on Substack. So I invited Kate to chat to us today about her journey with holding space online, writing books, making this whole kind of incredibly spacious and generous space on Substack. Well, that's how I find it anyway. And I just thought it would be so gorgeous to hear from Kate and see how she might inspire your journey on Substack. So hi, Kate. Hello, my friend. <laughs> would you like to tell us a little bit about yourself? So, you know, if, for people that have never heard of you before, and that is possible, isn't it? Sometimes we forget, like, I know who you are, I've read both of your books, but people might be coming across you for the first time. So let us know who you are. Yeah, yeah, no. Um, first, thank you so much for the generous reflection, just in that I feel like the word spaciousness or like spacious for Substack or like what I'm doing there, that that felt really beautiful. So thank you so much for that. Um, okay, so yes, my name is Kate Flanders. I am the author of two books, like you said. I'd say one of them is probably what I'm most well known for, whether I like it or not. <laughs> uh, it's called The Year of Less, uh, which is about a year where I didn't buy anything and also just talked about my habits around consumption, um, specifically around alcohol, but other things as well. Um, I have, I don't know, it's like in the past, I've hosted two different podcasts. I, well, for eight years, I wrote um, for a time, like what was probably one of the most popular personal finance blogs in Canada. And yeah, and then I took a long break. Like I wrote my two books. And so that's what I was doing largely in the break. But I took a large break from sharing anything really online other than the occasional Instagram post um you know life's taken me many different places I'm from Canada I'm now living in the northeast of England um and welcome. yeah and, and thank you <laughs> welcome thank you. to the northeast I know you've been here a little while but I think it's nice to say that yeah no and I, I love it I love it up here um and yeah and like you said I'm just kind of hanging out and uh trying some things on Substack so. yeah and so this personal finance blog that you had in Canada I didn't know about that. Like I knew about it through your books, but I hadn't found it online, like as an online consumer. But as soon as I realized you had a Substack, I was like straight on it. You know, it was like, yes, I'm going to connect with Kate. That feels really good to do. Were you looking for like another online home? Like were you looking to remount the blog or, you know, come up with a new title or how, how did it come about where you were like, I'm going to start a Substack? Yeah, so I stopped writing the blog basically when the year of less came out so kind of early to mid 2018 and I still kept my newsletter like my mailing list but I, I didn't really write that much um and you know I think between the year of less which the launch of that and even like the first year that followed I felt so overexposed oh and also very burnt out um I really did not have capacity to show up online like it was just gone um and then this is kind of fun to think about like I would say that I didn't necessarily know what I wanted to do online again but I knew that I missed the act of writing regularly and also of having community and building community right like one of my favorite things on my old blog which once upon a time was called blonde on a budget <laughs> uh was that you know I would write something and people would just talk to each other in the comments like uh -huh. yes they would say something yeah. to me or they might ask me a question or something but like someone else might pose a question and five people might reply to that and I think the idea of e even if it doesn't get to look exactly the same one day having at least like the opportunity to do that again right? Like to, to, yes, be sharing your writing again, but mostly to try and build community. That is what I was looking for. Um, blogging didn't feel like it because I, like, I do think some people still read blogs, of course, but I don't think they got a lot of engagement, or at least that's 
kind of my perception I also just look at myself as a consumer and it's like I don't read anybody's blog that's not a place I go right like I don't go actively to someone's website slash blog anymore right like to see what they're up to um so yeah just kind of thinking like I also don't want it to be a newsletter where it's not visible anywhere which is like some people might love and it was like I don't want that like I want to write something and have it be out there and so yeah Substack felt like a a great fit for that I had no idea what I was doing when I was getting started but yeah it felt like I guess a, a good place to start yeah that's and I guess given what you've said and the various different iterations of being invited to share online you know through your podcast like you've had a presence on Instagram and you said you know it was maybe showing up there it was this new place to kind of experiment with and did it feel quieter at first or did you get some of your old subscribers and did you tell your mailing list and your Instagram did you tell all of your people your people (laughs) or did you kind of let it build up how did that work? So I moved my mailing list over, Okay. which is how, like, I mean, stats are visible on Substack, right? So it's like, I have just, well, probably like just under 9,000 subscribers. So I'd like moved my list over. So that's where a, a chunk of that came from. Um, but then yes, like started sharing that, like, I'm going to be writing more often. Mm-hmm. And it's interesting because the way that I I did it, then my stats would look different than some people who maybe started from zero because I'd basically been MIA for years, right? <laughs> but I had this long list and I, and then to say, I'm going to start writing regularly again. Actually, at first, my numbers all started going down because there's these people who like haven't heard from you for a long time, you know, and they're like, well, maybe they don't want content, <laughs> right? Or maybe they don't want like a bunch of new content all of a sudden. So at first, actually, my numbers went down. Now they're like, passed back up where they started but you know it was kind of an interesting journey at first to see and and I knew that would happen I knew that would happen like it was one of those things like because of that exact hypothesis I'm about to tell people I've been quiet for years and now I'm going to write regularly and many people will be like no thank you (laughs) yeah or maybe they just sort of go I don't I don't know what this is you know because mm-hmm. Substack's quite new especially I think here in the UK like most of my readership is from overseas so yes yeah, that's really interesting to me because yeah. I live here you know <laughs> so whereas my Instagram stats would be mainly northeast England and I'd be like looking at it super frustrated apart from like the nice connections that I make with like other creatives overseas it doesn't feel like that happened on Substack for me it felt like okay I'm plugging into something that is all always already really vibrant overseas so I think for some people there's been this like oh no but what is Substack and I don't know and I don't know if I want to be plugged into it and I don't know if I want to receive things regularly like my inbox is a sacred place or I need it for work or you know there's those things isn't there or sometimes people end up subscribed with two emails there's all sorts of things goes on for people isn't there but you know it's interesting and for you when you just emerging out of the cocoon and going no no I do actually want to build this again and talk to people online again you know that's it's okay but it's not the best is it you know and you're like ah okay bye then yeah I mean it helped to go in with just that healthy expectation right like I just went in thinking I'll probably lose a bunch of people at the start and yeah and that's okay yeah right it's like I think that's true and and it's something I've held on to many times because I think the reality for me is I am someone who's made multiple shifts in my career in what I write about the frequency Mm. the kinds of things I write about Mm -hmm. I've made many changes over the Mm -hmm. years and with each one I think even before like launching it or announcing the change I've always had to sit with there are probably people who don't want this right or who who aren't interested in like maybe they just liked when I talked about money or debt or the years I talked about minimalism and decluttering and they're not interested in what I'm doing anymore and that has to be okay like it just yeah yeah I love I love that it feels so strong to be able to own that space that we are multifaceted human beings that go through shifts and chapters and changes and have different influences and things that we're passionate about talking about and that we don't lock ourselves into something I think that for me definitely on Substack when I first started it was just like an escapist place to write Mm. and I didn't know whether that would continue but I knew that I just needed that space to just 
pour all of my emotions around everything that I was dealing with my, with my husband's health condition into a space. And people that join me now would never know that unless they went all the way back again. You know, they wouldn't, ha- they wouldn't be able to marry those two people up in their minds. I'm Claire that does sparkle on Substack if they find that first, you know, so right. it's interesting to me, you know, it is interesting and I don't mind referencing past me. I don't know how you feel about those chapters to say, oh yeah, I, I had this and I did that. And now it's this, like, do you own that space? I would think most of it. Like, I think definitely my old blog, I can own all of that and feel really proud of it. I'm like, I grew something from nothing. When I started, I wrote anonymously. Like, I didn't even put my name on it. And when I stopped, like, I had, this is back, like, sort of thinking of um, website traffic, which I don't, I don't really look at that kind of stuff on um, Substack. But it's like, website traffic would have shown me, like, in Google, Google Analytics, I had minimum 500,000 page views a month and like 50,000 unique visitors every single month. And, and I'm like, I'm very proud of that. I'm very Mm -hmm. proud of everything that I put into that project. Um, I would say that I have gotten a lot better with this or my relationship with this has changed, but I probably had a more challenging relationship with my first book, considering that on the other side of it, like I said, I felt so overexposed and had burnout that I had a really like, I don't want to talk about my book. Like that's how I used to feel. I don't feel that anymore because I have done the work on, it's more like integrating who I was in all of that. Um, But yeah, it's like, I think, I mean, you also learn the valuable lesson that when you write a book about something, people might still want to talk about it like five, six plus years later. For a lifetime. Right? <laughs> it's like, yeah. I'm known as the person who, you know, didn't shop for a year and decluttered and got rid of the majority of my belongings. And it's mm-hmm. like, I don't really care about any of that stuff. Anymore. Yeah. <laughs> right? Like I am, I'm, I'm still very mindful with my money. So the way that I manage my money is the same basically as that. But I don't actively think about any of those things. It's not stuff I want to talk about or write about. Like, it just doesn't interest me. It's like, that was a phase of life. You know, that was an experiment, really, that I did. And luckily, like, people were interested in it, which was never the plan. I was just writing about something I was doing that ultimately turned into an offer of a book deal that you're like, I didn't plan any of that. And so I think there's there was a lot of stuff around that that I used to not be able to kind of hold space for but I've gotten better with I think you know when you birth a creative project and I'm like this as well because as a creative producer and engagement consultant I have a creative project it comes to an end and then there's a life force that is still attached to it even if it hasn't engaged many people for those people there is a ripple and there is something that they want to keep coming back to and nostalgia and the way I've got around this on my sub stack is I've got a heading that is called creative projects and there's not really very much in there at the moment because I've been focused on other work and doing other things but it's like I'm going to need just a broad brush stroke called creative projects just in case I want to kind of show up either as a like with a personal creative thing or I want to talk about my work outside of the individual stuff that I do so it is really interesting and I do feel like there's that yeah there is that life force isn't there and also the complexity of a book deal and bringing a book to print and then being on that PR train that has to follow right because you're expected to do a whole host of PR around a book that you maybe put down in the edits like a year before a year and a half I'm just sort of guessing what your timeline was like but it's usually feels a long time in the life of a creative right yes and I think what I didn't understand about that book specifically that you know hindsight taught me is like I was so vulnerable in parts of that book Mm -hmm. um that actually then like the the launch and all the PR around it the questions people asked were so intimate and it almost felt like, you know, you're constantly sharing very vulnerable things, but then the way like PR works, not, not so much actually like podcasts were the best because you get to have an actual proper and long and engaged dialogue, but interviews can be three to eight minutes long 
-hmm. and you you all of a sudden expose something very vulnerable and then you're cut off like it's just you're done and you're just left sort of feeling exposed and emotional almost and doing that over and over like I had days where I would do like 12 to 16 back-to-back radio interviews and and every single time you'd have that feeling of like oh that was like big and then it's all of a sudden over it's very jarring and then it's like you wait three minutes beep beep and on to the next and it's it was just really intense and I think like in hindsight also what I've learned is if I were to do all of that kind of stuff again I would want to be in therapy like actively during that process and I did do this with my second book I was much better with my boundaries I said no a lot more um with the first I had like no boundaries I think I really with that book I think because of the way everything came about like the book deal and all of that is that I didn't believe I was really worthy of that book deal wow and so then because of that I I then had like no boundaries in the release part of it because I just sort of felt like I had to do things to almost like prove I was worthy of it all or something yeah um and yeah and I learned a lot and like some really hard lessons in that time so it's amazing you could set yourself up as a coach for people in my <laughs> first books I know like I hear this a lot like I've got friends in the publishing industry and then you know when you talk to published authors and they're at that stage of burning out it's like I don't know what else I can do but yet the requests keep coming and like how do I hold this space because I'm proud of the book and I want to promote it but I'm tired you know I'm tired of like regurgitating that information like I just want people to find it and read it and like have that all be organic but the nature of how our attention span has changed and this Mm. is another reason I love Substack is that it's hard to trip people into that like okay I'm gonna buy a book and read a book like for me it's always and you know I'm busy with the kids and stuff but it's like holiday vibes so I reread your book on my holiday in April because Mm. I was like you know what I want to reread the book like that feels like a really nice thing to reread a book like to not have to like get into the weeds of something else it was like I'll just reread Kate's book wow like that's a nice treat so yeah it's interesting isn't it I think yeah watch this space Kate my my other self some like, solidarity session with authors around it all but like you said there's a boundary thing there isn't there and that's one of the things that I wanted to touch on with Substack because you've opened this incredibly generous from my point of view paid community so we pay an annual subscription I think maybe you do monthly as well but I pay annually to be part of that and we meet on zoom and you set the context in advance as to what we might be honing in on and for me I use it as this real space to get into the weeds of what I want to write about that isn't for online so that's like my intent I always know because of the nature of the questions posed that it is a safe space that it is my space that it's sort of this lovely sacred space to like write about the things that I definitely won't be sharing online and I learned that really quickly because I think the first session I was like I've written so much and I was like I've written so much like that was super therapeutic wow (laughs) so yeah so so you got that space you set that space up did you do that at the like near the beginning of starting your substack or did you grow into that space no I mean originally I thought because I guess it that is one thing I did kind of work wise in the few years that I was offline or not sharing as much um is that I was hosting these like journaling workshops every once in a while so I would I would typically do it over a four week or like kind of four weekend period Mm. um and yeah and so I'd pick a subject and it's like we'd meet every week for like four Sundays in a row and I enjoyed that and then I guess like I thought it might be nice to throw some journaling sessions into Substack like in into the community um but I didn't know exactly what it would look like so and even still this is still changing shape I would say it's like at first I was like oh, I'll just do them maybe like quarterly and I did one and I think one more but then I had this feeling like quarterly doesn't feel like frequent enough more so because I was really enjoying seeing everyone like seeing everyone's faces on there um and you'd you'd kind of have the same people show up not every time but there was always at least like you know 10 people who were always there 
Um, and so kind of seeing them, then you get to know those people a little bit more. Um, and so then I was like, maybe I'll try monthly. Monthly has proven to not really be working for me, but mostly because um, like my partner works on Monday to Friday and it's like, very, it's like a very busy Monday to Friday. And, and then also has like kids half the time. And so it's like half the weekends he has the kids. I want to see them. And so it like, it was like weekends actually feel like right now I'm in a real transition phase with that in general. Cause I'm like, weekends kind of feel hard or kind of monthly feels hard because it takes away from the time I do get with them. Mm-hmm. Um, so I haven't quite figured out the answer to that yet, but it's like, I do love doing the sessions. Uh, I love that they're like a way to connect with people, see people's faces, also let them kind of get to know each other, even if no one's talking too much. Like even if you just see the things happening in the chat, right? Like someone will say what they just wrote and then someone else is like, oh my gosh, I didn't even think of that. Um, And it just, it's so cool. So I'm like, I'm still trying to figure out sort of what the right balance is, or it's almost like what the better day of the week is. It's like, I could do monthly, probably if it was a different day of the week. Mm-hmm. um but like will that work for people again I'm always questioning <laughs> it is but it's so good to question isn't it I think that we can only try things it's it's yeah. still such a new platform and that so when I first joined Substack I read quite a lot of journalistic content I thought that mm-hmm. was the type of writer that was on there that seemed to be what I was finding it was quite difficult to discover new writers and yours was really the only space where someone was holding space for a community Mm -hmm. and that's since shifted and changes you know Substack have come out and said we're all about community so that's great you know they kind of recognize that people have used the platform in that way but they've also advised people to use the platform in that way so to grow that community to grow the subscribers and then ultimately obviously they get paid if we get paid so it's great for them but I think it was at first this kind of test and adjust space of like okay well if I'm not a writer if I'm a creative who also likes to write how can I take up space behind a paywall and like what would that look like and actually even if I am a writer which obviously you are it's like what would what would that look like like what could it look like behind a paywall and I think at the point when I joined your membership, I said to you this and no, it's dinner that I was very cautious about joining any memberships because I was like, oh, I, ju- I don't know. Like I'm getting so much from just being here and writing here. I don't want to like influence my own practice too much. And then there was just this beautiful connect. I was like, no, actually, I do need that community. Like that's mm-hmm. the community that I need. And that's how it's kind of continued, really. Yeah, it's been interesting. I feel like there's only so much behind the paywall any one person could be plugged into now that it is more community focused because I think when it was paid for content and you were paying to read articles we've got much more bandwidth to just receive an article read it maybe have a thought on it maybe comment but now we are active participants in communities it's different right it's yeah it's very different and 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 I mean, all writers are doing it differently. Not every writer there is there to build community. Mm-hmm. Some mm-hmm. certainly are, and some are more focused on getting paid for their writing and, and being able to do it on their own terms, not having to pitch mm-hmm. elsewhere or, mm-hmm. you know, get paychecks from other publications, but instead create their own and get a paycheck from that. Yeah. Um, everyone is doing it a bit differently, but I mean, it makes sense that this... I'd say like at least that creators are finding so much value in something like Substack because, well, especially because of things like social media is just dried up really. Like unless you're on TikTok, which will will dry up eventually one day too. It's kind of like all the platforms have or are, right? Like everything's changed so much, but I think for creators it's given us this wonderful space to keep creating things and be in community with each other. Um, So at the very least, there's certainly community of other creators. And I, I think then it's not a challenge, but it's more um, like you said, like, you know, some people still don't even really know what Substack is. It's like getting sort of like non-creators like just like not just but like consumers to come and actually participate in community that is different that's different Mm -hmm. it's um yeah and so it really just depends on like what you're offering and how you're offering it 
the space that you're creating and, and or holding. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's fun. I'm I'm still finding it fun, which feels like a nice thing after a year, right? Like it feels... Yes, it's been about a year, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's actually been like exactly a year. It's um it was September anyways of last year where yeah. I I wrote and just kind of said no idea what I'm doing, but I miss <laughs> you and I want to be here. Yeah, like... yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's <laughs> nice. And when you sent that out into the world, was there any point where you were like, no, I'm going to shut it all down again? Or have you felt like, no, this feels good. Like this feels measured. This feels rounded. I feel happy. Like, has it been mainly consistent or have there been moments of going, ah, I just want to turn it all off. <laughs> okay. So never to the point of like, oh, I want to stop. Mm-hmm. Um, I do think that I went through what, well, at least like kind of the spring and early summer, I wrote a series of really honest posts that took me a long time to work on because they were incredibly personal and and talking through situations that happened years ago and so stirring some of it back up took time so it's like the writing took time and you know I might take two three weeks between posts because literally emotionally I needed that just to get the work done Mm -hmm. Um, and I remember during that really getting in my head about like if I don't write soon everyone's gonna leave or like I almost put all this pressure on myself of I need to be writing faster or like get this out or or stick to like a consistent like schedule um and because I wasn't able to do that I definitely it was more I guess noticing my own like inner critic popping up right but it didn't make me want to stop or anything I think if anything what's been incredible for me to see is that since writing those four posts, everything has opened up inside of me, Mm -hmm. including uh, like an openness um, that I just, I could never have anticipated. I could never have anticipated how I'd be feeling about writing and community and all of that right now. And I think all of it is because I did go through not only the process of writing those pieces, but making the decision of like it's okay this is again giving yourself that self-compassion like it's it's okay that I'm not publishing for a couple of weeks it's not a big deal also people don't have time to read content all the time (laughs) yeah it's true sometimes they do and sometimes they don't and nobody really cares probably if I haven't written for two weeks like I'm sure they'll still be here or it's fine It's so, so beautifully generous about your personal creative process, but also I think other people will connect to a lot of what you've said within that. I feel like sometimes there is this, this, this burning and this is relatively new. Like our grandparents didn't have this space. Like there's this burning for us to have our voice heard and have witness to that in the way that we want to do that. So I woke up really early the other morning. I've been like working on this sort of, thing that I wanted to say for weeks you know trying to like grapple with it and go do I even Mm. want to talk about it publicly like how do I want to say it like what is the story that is important to still be of service because I wanted to tell it in a way that was of service and then the other morning it was like 3 30 a.m or something I was like I just need to go and write and I published it that morning Mm. so sometimes for me it's like it's all there but then it just comes out and I'm just like you know what I'm going (laughs) press publication then it's done and the lightness that you just described that spaciousness I was like thank goodness that is done because now there's something else there's something Mm -hmm. else there's more space there's that's gone now like it's gone whatever it was that was like gnarling at me and like hard for me to hold it's finished it's done it's gone and you know anything that I might have been attaching to judgment or anything around that and like 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 you you know I've had therapy and I work with coaches and mentors and I think it's really important to process stuff of course you know to feel safe to be able to show up but it's also an incredible invitation of our time as women you know to say okay like I'm I'm gonna write this and then other people are gonna find themselves in it you know yeah yeah or just you know get to know you more <laughs> like by you if you're writing something where you're getting to know yourself more mm-hmm. yes like the hope is that someone might see something in themselves yeah uh, you know, we might give them some idea they hadn't thought of 
um, or just feel less alone. But yeah, they also just get to know you. They get yeah. to know you. I think a big thing for me the past few years has has been a feeling of trying to feel more fully expressed mm-hmm. um, and, and actually using my voice again. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So. Yeah. And so you are about to come back to Substack after a little summer break and a conscious summer break. And you said to me just in the email before, like, just so you know, there's something new to tell you. Do you want to tell everybody like that shift that you've made that um, how that all feels? And like, if you're ready to talk about it, this won't go out for a few weeks. So it'll probably be well in the ether by the time. But yeah, it'd be nice to hear from your point of view how that's all come about. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, um, I can say the simple thing first is I just decided to change the the name of my Substack. Um, Originally, I had titled it Hi Friend. I still love that. Hi Friend feels very me. Um, It's a greeting I've used online, like since I started writing in 2010. Um, So I think there are a lot of people who would know that as me or would feel that that's me. And something that I've been questioning for myself over the, like, A, since starting Substack a year ago, or since starting my publication a year ago, um, but certainly the past few months has been, I've been sitting with, like, it's almost two questions, like, one, what is the direction of this? Mm-hmm. Um, is this going to be, like, a personal blog, or do I want to create something more like a publication? And so I've sat with a lot of questions around that. The answer actually came very easily to me. I think that after, especially after writing kind of the series of posts that I did, it became very obvious to me that like when I reflect on not only all the personal projects I've done, blogs, books, podcasts and stuff, but also actual professional work. Like I've been self-employed for about eight and a half years now, but it's like I did have jobs before that. Um, and so kind of looking at the different pieces of my career before being self-employed, like what were the jobs I loved? What were the tasks I loved? What were my favorite parts of it? And kind of thinking like, how can I actually create something that I enjoy stepping into every single day, Mm -hmm. right? Like that I feel really excited about that energizes me that I want to show up for. And for me, it's not a personal blog. And that's just for me. I'm like, I actually don't want to write a blog. I don't want to write just about myself. Like my favorite job was working as a managing editor. I've worked on at least like a handful of editorial teams. I love the process of working with writers. I love editing work, talking to writers, helping them make pieces better. um, Or like helping them if they feel stuck on something. Like I love all of that. And, and so that answered the first one for me, which is that I don't want this to just be a personal project anymore. I actually want this to be something that other people truly do see themselves in. Like it's outside of me. Yes, I'm managing it and I'll, I'll still write stories, including personal stories, but it's not just about me. It's more about topics um, that I have, you know, personal experience with. So that felt like one answer. And then I've sat with the title of what I might change it to. Honestly, for years, like I've had (laughs) these words just as as happens with creative stuff, right? Uh, Like you you come up with something and you just back burner it or like it sits in Mm. your brain somewhere. (laughs) And, but it always pops up. You're like, oh yeah, I wonder if I'll ever do anything with that. You know, Mm. I wonder if I'll ever... Yeah, use that title for anything. Uh, And then, so yeah, with, as soon as I... I was, it's like, I was playing around with um, sort of like the about page, but I was still using hi friend and just like, it didn't make sense to me. And it's in one of those ways that like only a creative probably understands. Right. But like, you're working on it and you're like, it's just not working. Like this copy works, but like the title doesn't feel aligned with it. And then I was like, oh yeah, that other title that I've had for a long time. And then I just plugged it in. Like I just kind of played around with graphics and stuff. I'm like, well, that fits perfectly. <laughs> wow. Uh, and so I just, yeah, just decided to make the switch. And um, yeah, so now it's it's no longer High Friend. It is now called Explore Within. Um, and the idea being that we look at like three different questions, which is what are you exploring in yourself? What are you exploring in your relationships with others? 
And what are you exploring in your relationships with the worlds around you? And all all content will like be surrounded by that. I think everything I've done has always surrounded those questions, um, mm -hmm. but it just feels more directed and then also gives people like who do want to write something, it gives them a prompt to think about what it is that they might want to share. Yeah, it's, it's very... Um there's an invite there isn't there but it's like a nuanced and complicated invite if you want it to be or it can be just simplistic as in like let's take it back to basics like what's going on inside or what do you see you know yeah. I just love that like there's it's nice in terms of the energy that you have around being very present you know with us mm -hmm. when we come to the calls and you know it just does feel like that magic of taking care of our mental health you know and all of that stuff around just taking it back to let's just be present let's be here like let's be in this and again one of the other things I love about Substack is I do feel that I'm invited to do that there whereas on social media which I don't really use to be honest anymore I just feel pulled in lots of different directions and I feel like my brain just is done so whatever studies that might be done in the future of the people that spent however many years growing through you know the iterations of MySpace Facebook Instagram and then just went I'm done yes <laughs> I just feel like maybe I, maybe I'm that part of that study because that's how I feel I just feel like I just can't and with Substack I more than can and and more than want to kind of show up and and uh yeah be all parts of myself you know mm. by plugging into communities yes but also by taking up space in my own publications of which I've somehow ended up with three but just <laughs> <laughs> the life of a multi-hyphen this is what happens and 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 I love what you said about you know that title's there like there's something there like what is that and then now at this point like that feels really a nice invitation for you to show up to your space and see what it offers out it's gorgeous well this is, I can't even tell you I only actually properly changed the name like a week ago wow. and I haven't said anything yet because I haven't sort of written my welcome back post but the energy I have had since doing it is it's one of those things you're like am I chasing the shiny object you know and then you do it and you're like no that was actually just like the best decision for me like it, it's like it freed something up and it truly let go, like helped me let go of this is a me project. It's like, no, it's not like, that's not what this is. I don't want to be the only writer. I don't want to be the only voice here. Mm -hmm. um, I want this to feel like something that, yeah, that people can see themselves in and like yeah. want to be part of. And it um, feels, it feels like as well, I sometimes feel this when I publish a guest post, like, I want to spend time with that guest post as an editor and a curator and in that relationship with that person that I've invited to the minds about big dreams and quiet ambition. That's the title. And it feels like such a beautiful invite to somebody. And they always say, oh, I haven't really thought about that before, but mm -hmm. it's in them, you know, so it's like an awakening. And then when the post comes to life, there are so many emotions for me as the curator of okay like how do I best do this post justice and even from the small stuff of like where to position the images that they've sent through and it's been such an interesting thing to do like to see how that feels like when it's our publication and we're offering that but then also when the energy goes out to other people and you can say okay like I'm so proud like here it is and yeah it's interesting I know the Substack have sort of use some interesting language around what Substack is to them. And I feel like we all use slightly different language in terms of what it is to us. So yeah, he's just sort of figuring it out together, I think, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. I mean, yeah. even listening to that though, it made me wonder like, how do you feel when you share a guest post? How does that feel for you? I feel relieved that it's done because I always have this, like, I hope I've done enough, you know, mm. so I don't edit anybody's words, but I'll like pull out and italicize certain things and bold certain things just because that is my preferred visual style. And I've always done that in my own posts. And then oh. I always like question, I've got two questions that are quite similar and I'm always like, but it's for the people that want to go deeper because there's a different way in. So I've left yeah. them in thus far, but it's like, oh, I'm answering. There's a little bit of a niggle. Like maybe I take one of those out. Like, mm. but I don't want to take any, I don't want to take anybody away. You know, they've got, they've flowed it all out there. So yeah, it feels really nice. And I feel like I've got to know the people that I've invited to do that. So at first I was very guarded and I just made my own invites and 
did that whole thing and then people weren't getting back to me and stuff you know life gets busy yeah. and then I just did this google form and I was like oh <laughs> it's like it's all just in a google form and the invitation felt more generous because more people could fill it in and if I ever mentioned it more people would come and fill it in and now the content's sitting there and I get to kind of decide and pull it in and open up that conversation with people like as and when I've got time so yeah that did feel it just felt really nice to be able to do because I think especially when people are starting out on Substack and this is what happened with me, I applied to guest post on somebody else's Substack and when she emailed me back, like I nearly fell off my chair. I was like, she said yes. And I think, I don't know, it just, I don't know. I, I guess I just expected to be like, no, that's boring. I don't, mm. want it. I don't know. I can't tell you now because I've come through the other side and I think at the time I just expected it to be a rejection. I deal with rejections a lot in my job, you know, job, job, um, funding rejections. And so I'm very programmed to think that it's a no. So mm, mm -hmm. I think maybe there's some work to do there. But in owning the space where I can invite other people in, it just feels like my best work. I just love it. Yeah, mm. it's so nice. And I guess, you know, have you have you done that before? Like, is this the first time? Has anyone done takeovers? Like, how's that worked in the past? Oh, yeah. I mean, when I used to write my blog, I didn't probably for the first, I don't know, three or four years, but definitely in the last handful of years, I had guest writers and often um, it back then, actually, part of it was like it was really helpful for me to have guest writers because it meant I could write weekly. But for a period like the the amount that I used to travel and work, um, mm. like part of when I was blogging, too, it's like I was finishing my degree. I was working full time. I have no idea how I managed all the things back then, <laughs> but I did still like publish weekly every week for like eight years. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, like other people's posts both helped me, but also as my audience grew, like as my page views went up, it's like, I knew it was really helpful for other people. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so back then, I mean, yeah, it was wonderful. I would say I didn't really get to like work with the writers necessarily. Occasionally I would go back and say like, you know, I've read this and like, I feel maybe a little confused about this pe this part of it. Like, could you answer this question? You know, like you don't have to change your writing or anything, but like, could you make sure you answer this question? Like in the clearer, post? yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So something like that. Um, so I've done a lot of that. Also, you know, not for my own stuff, but worked as managing editor on a team before, like for a startup. You work with lots of writers, lots of experience with that. I think something that has felt different, and it's actually more like I can just feel my own growth, which feels really cool. Mm -hmm. what, what feels different this time is I am getting pitches like for articles and I, I feel grateful the experience I just had with the the first article like the first guest post that's going to come out I feel like our connection and and our communication was incredible and it was so collaborative and like felt like friends by the end like it was oh, such so a nice such a great experience and also made me feel like yes I'm on the right path with this like mm -hmm. working with people is absolutely what I want to be doing um but it's also meant like I'm getting a lot of pitches and what I could see is old me let's say I got a pitch for something and I didn't want it I would say my confidence back then would have left me being more avoidant and I, I may not have replied to that or I would have been overly nice about saying no and what's been really neat is I've recognized in myself like if I'm going to step into this I'm just calling it like I'm the managing editor of Explore Within. So I'm like, if I'm stepping into that hat, that means you have to reject mm -hmm. and or reject, but add, you know, here's what's missing. And if you want to pitch again, I'd love to read it. Okay. Um, yeah. And so it's felt incredibly important to me to be replying to as many emails as possible. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. To like, take it seriously. It's not me. Right. Like, I think, I think something about having sort of like Kate Flanders be a blog or, or whatever, whatever the title would have been. Mm -hmm. um, it feels so personal that there's, there's, it's like your connections with people are too personal. And then I can really struggle with the boundaries of that. And it's so actually, I guess it's been neat to see now that I'm calling it a publication and it's something outside of me that yes, I might still be the name on or the face of, but it's still outside of me. I'm stepping into it into a much more professional way, which has just been really neat. 
It's so incredible to hear that. And I know it'll speak to a lot of people. Like there was just a question recently in my membership around guest posts and the energy of those. And the specific question was around that it gets, they get less views, right? So Mm -hmm. my thing was, yeah, they might. um, But also there could be a shift there and an invitation because it could be relatively new, but also for the people that do view it and do connect to those stories, like it kind of doesn't matter. So it's that balance sometimes, isn't it? Of like, if we do go into the statistics in the publication, which I don't massively do, if I'm honest, I don't know whether you spend time there. Yeah. It's like, because for me, I'm always writing for three people and I talk about this a lot. Two of them I know in real life, one of them I've never met, but I know know them online. And I write for those three people and that helps me to get it out. And then once it's out, like it's not mine anymore, it's fine, it's out there, you know, it'll do what it'll do. And it kind of doesn't matter. And that has been such a shift for me because when my posts were getting lots of comments and I couldn't keep up with the notifications, I didn't feel like myself. I'd felt like Mm. I'd created, I don't want to say a monster, but I'm going to say a monster because I was like, oh, I I do not know what to do with this in a wholehearted way because I can't keep up with who that person is and if they've commented before and what conversation I had with them when they did because it's too many too fast. Mm -hmm. So, so, So now maybe subsects changed a bit as well since notes came in and people have you know got more energy there and stuff so it's maybe a bit easier but I think I didn't want to get back to that and that's one of the things that I really wanted to dive into with you and I know you've made this kind of shift in terms of your publication and kind of like carving out different spaces within it I'm not sure like how much you use notes or chat or whether those are two things that you're exploring on substack but in terms of managing that kind of viral energy that comes in, like how, 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 Kate, how? And like, yeah. if it comes from nowhere, which is what was happening to me, seemingly nowhere, then what? Like, what do you do? <laughs> yeah, I mean, this has been, I guess for most people or for a lot of people, this has been something I've actively not only thought about and struggled with, but taken very slow steps towards for years I remember Mm -hmm. at one point probably especially when I was going through burnout from the year of less I remember making a list of all the different ways people could contact me Mm -hmm. right so it was like being and being very granular so it was like this email address my twitter just regular like tweets twitter dms facebook comments facebook dms Instagram comments, Instagram DMs, like wow. texting, like, but it but being very honest with myself of all the different ways that people could be trying to reach out to me. And over the years, I've just cut them. Mm-hmm. Like in 2018, done with Facebook, cut it off. And then so that cut off two of them, right? Mm-hmm. I think 2019, stopped using Twitter, that cut off two, off two ways people could contact me. Instagram, I still have. I, I, I don't think I've I think I've posted on it once this year so okay. like, I don't use it anymore but it's like technically it's there um but yeah then it was like I got it basically like I, I stopped blogging so then comments were off the table mm-hmm. um so then it was like I had a contact form on my website an email okay. and that was it mm-hmm. and that I I will say I think for how burnt out I was before cutting down the number of places people could connect with me did help me get writing projects done. This is like the way my brain works, right? Like it helped me get writing projects done, like the books. It helped me come back to writing. I have to say I've been very hesitant to ever add anything back in. So even notes, I just wrote a note for the first time, maybe 10 days ago. And, and yeah, all of a sudden it was like, I don't know 60 or something likes and like eight or 10 comments and I'm like okay if I'm going to keep doing that that's going to be a thing that will be then a thing to be talking on I still haven't really made my decision around if I'm going to use notes or not Mm -hmm. I feel like comments feel great like comments Mm -hmm. directly on posts feel great Mm -hmm. notes notes also again it's just me noticing my brain and how I work because you're seeing all kinds of people's stuff, I actually find it quite overwhelming. And almost the way we described kind of Instagram, 
there you described Instagram there it's like I'm seeing so many different people's content and ideas that I actually think it messes with me just staying on my path and yeah. and doing what I'm doing I kind of hate that notes is even part of the app yeah like I, I wish it wasn't like one of the tabs at the bottom mm-hmm. um but that's just me and like how how my brain sort of sees them and and like how I feel when I'm looking at notes none of and it that- feels negative it's just like this it, it definitely messes with my attention. Yeah, that's it, isn't it? And a lot of people said that, the people that I was talking to when notes first came in, I definitely felt it. And I was like, absolutely not. Like, this is not a space that I'm going to spend time. And then I got curious about the conversation, the depth of conversation possible, but there is definitely a filtering going on. And I definitely need, and I know this, I definitely need to step out in terms of a monthly overview of how much I'm on there. And that pull... Mm to go on there because notes some notes can last up to 10 days so you're still getting notified so not like social media you're still getting notified like 10 days later someone's commented and then I go into the whole like oh but I've got I've got to reply like my whole thing is I just when I couldn't reply to everyone I was like I don't want to do this I can't Mm -hmm. I can't hold space in this way like I want to be able to have a reply but then a conversation like that's what I want to do on Substack so yeah it's it's its own thing and I totally yeah. connect to what you were saying and some people have left the platform since notes was introduced because it was so spacious before and they were finding it really difficult to like navigate it even just existing you know as like a noisy thing yeah <laughs> so some of the people that I connect with in the early days like have left which is sad you know I'm still kind of connect on email now and again but it's not the same and I was really enjoying the writing so I think there's something there isn't there It'd be nice if they made it so that we could take it off if we wanted to take it off like as yeah, a little... just if you didn't have to see it in the app like if you looked at it on the website because uh, there is a part of me I'm genuinely curious about and would love to use it as a way to connect with other writers especially mm-hmm. as I'm thinking about like I would like more guest writers mm-hmm. right like it's like I would love to see who I connected with in dialogue over notes so it's like I feel open to it I just do notice that it it does something to my attention when I'm on there like I don't feel great and sometimes I actually feel not anxious but like yeah just when you see all these other things people are doing it's so easy to sort of think maybe I should do something like that or maybe I could add a thing like that and it's like stop just do what you're doing you do (laughs) your bit of of it yeah yeah I definitely I definitely and I've seen that I've seen you know, people pick up on what's popular and then go, oh, I'll do something of that iteration. Or like they'll mention like really um, high profile writers or writers with big followings and try and get like traction that way. And it's like, oh, I've turned Substack into like the bad bits of social media, but with like a guise of like, it's okay because it's Substack, but it's like subtle. I don't know, my brain like connects things. So I see some people like mentioning the same people over and over and over Mm. again and maybe people see that about me I don't know you know but it's like oh like okay like it's fine like but you've already told us like 15 times how much you appreciate their work like we get we get it you know so it's hard isn't it it's so hard like and I don't want to sound judgy in any way because people want to express how they're feeling but Mm -hmm. it's so instant whereas a Substack post is more than in more it takes, takes longer doesn't it to kind of curate and consider and think about and put out in the world and there's more attached to it in a way it's interesting that it exists within what was a very different place I think before yeah 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 it makes me think of like the question almost that I could ask myself is like how could I use notes differently yeah or like how could I use it my way what would that mm. be mm-hmm um that'll be, that'll be something I sit with after yeah after you this can, conversation. yeah, yeah. Um, it'd be nice to see I mean I don't know about you Kate but like for me like Substack is part of my long-term plan so it's um, part of my long-term diversification of income but it's also part of my long-term creative plan as well and I think that's the beautiful thing about it you can kind of have this push pull like is it this is it that the freedom over like birthing a new thing and then you can say I'm going to put it down for a bit you can do anything you want and I don't know if you've thought more long term like are you just taking it like okay I'll do this next six months and I'll see where I end up so I would say in a way I've already answered what the first year was like I'm Mm -hmm. like I didn't know what I was doing I did not have a plan um including like I didn't even know some of the topics I would ever share with people like I didn't there was no plan in that it it got to this point where it was like 
creatively I felt blocked because I wasn't writing certain things mm-hmm. um, and just needed them out of me. Now with the shift of thinking about it as a publication, I don't have all the plans necessarily, but there's like there's a long a longevity to it that I can see um, in a way that I couldn't before. And yeah, it's like, I've no idea. I've never taken on a project where it's like, oh, this is the stepping stone for this thing. Like I didn't know blogging would ever lead to more writing or books. None of those things were plans for me. And I, I so I don't know what Substack could ever lead to. But what I do know is the, especially in turning it into a proper publication where I'm not the only writer, I know that it, feels like I'm turning it into a job I would actually want Mm. and so I'm just gonna enjoy that for now and Mm. and like keep feeling just how that feels keep paying attention to how that feels yeah I love that and that's a really generous cycle back to you isn't it that kind of like I'll keep paying attention and stuff like that I think so many people that have come over to my community are like, how do I do this? How do I do this? And it's like, there's an Mm -hmm. urgency there and it's fine for there to be an urgency, but I always send them back to their why. I'm like, tell me your why. What is your why? Like, why now? Why Substack? What are we doing? Like, what is it all about? And when we have those conversations, quite often there'll be things that come out, you know, around mindset or like insecurity even sometimes, or sometimes just like question, like big questions to sit with. And that is enough, isn't it? To just go, okay, like maybe it's okay just to be figuring it out as we go. Yeah. yeah. I will say just to share like a thought that came to me as soon as you said, like, what is your why? Mm. I feel like that's not one that I could have answered necessarily even a few months ago Mm -hmm. what I can say is I've been saying out loud to just like one or two friends of mine that things like I want to have a what feels like more of a proper business rather than just like I'm I'm totally tongue-in-cheek here but like the Kate Flanders show you know what I mean I'm like (laughs) I, I don't want it to just be me I want to have something that feels like a proper business that I am taking care of um and I like there there's sort of a mission in behind what I'm thinking about for explore within but it's like for me like around creativity but also some stability for myself mm-hmm. the idea of yeah like part of the why is is I want to create that for myself I want to create uh, some something that both creatively fulfills me but that feels like a job but one that I would want I love that I love that I just think it's so brilliant to hear that reflected back given the whole journey that you've been on Mm -hmm. and how everything has kind of come to this point and fits together and feels like okay I'm going to show up to my job but not in a like oh it's Monday I've got to go to my job in a like really like vibrant dynamic it's Monday I get to go to explore within like what's happening today that feels really nice and also separates out you Kate Mm -hmm. from explore within the job that you can close a laptop close a phone like that's something that is yeah yeah it's really possible isn't it like I always grapple with this like because I'm online at all sorts of funny times and especially have been in the the throes of them early motherhood but it is nice to say okay that's done now that's enough Mm. what else is there out there yeah Yeah. lovely oh thanks Kate it's been so amazing to hear all of your stories and the fabric Mm. of how you've woven it all together and your beautiful approach of like sitting with questions and giving things space and time and I just think it's so generous to do that for ourselves and it's so possible to do that for ourselves like we can just pause that urgency and just like go inside a bit and listen a bit more so thank you no thank you thank you for the great and thoughtful questions also you're welcome and so people can find you via substack explore within and I think that's what we're going to say isn't it like yeah yeah. I mean like if you want to look at old pretty pictures you can go on my Instagram yeah (laughs) yeah I I used to post lots of hiking and travel photos so like if you like nature (laughs) yeah that's all there you could just have a lovely scroll a lovely escape is scroll of past Kate's life of hiking that would be a nice (laughs) space to spend time but right here and now explore within is the place and thank you for that brilliant thanks Kate see you next time thanks Claire